There's a saying in politics, never hold inquiry unless you know the outcome. But that theory has been turned on its head. The Coates inquiry into the hotel quarantine saga should have been a no-frills affair for the Premier, where the criticism he's been drawing would have seen both him and his government exonerated. And for a short time, it certainly looked like that was exactly what was going to happen, with possibly some criticism aimed at the Premier to make it appear as though the Commission had done its job. That was the idea. That was what they were hoping. However, the Commission failed to do its job. It has not held the Premier to account, nor has it held the Government to account, or the key players involved in this whole sordid saga. Yes, I do understand that the findings of Commissioner Coates have yet to be handed down. But it's pretty reasonable to assume that the Commission has failed miserably. And it's failed because it's allowed a group of overpaid, incompetent bureaucrats, along with the Premier and those key ministers I talked about, the opportunity to make a mockery of the inquiry, with their repeated claims of forgetfulness, which showed a real contempt for every Victorian. But on Tuesday of this week, the Commission was forced to reconvene for an extraordinary meeting to look at recalling key figures. People like Brett Sutton, who has been a poster boy for the government, but whose credibility of late looks like it's in tatters. Top bureaucrat Chris Eccles, the man that Daniel Andrews placed great faith in, is another in this camp of frauds, as are Kim Peake, Graham Ashton, Martin Pakula and Daniel Andrews himself. They all gave evidence to the Commission and all of them withheld evidence. They also failed to be truthful to the Commission and to the Commissioner. They looked more like a, a band of rogues and criminals who now must go. It also seems that the Premier's own Chief of Staff, who was never called to testify in the first place, will more than likely end up as the headline act. Incredible. So how could the Commission get it so wrong? And what has happened? Well, the Commission's hand has been forced, thanks to Sky News commentator Peter Credlin. Credlin and Sky News, much like the informer has done of late, have been consistently critical of the Premier's handling of the COVID pandemic. But over the past couple of weeks, Credlin has managed to launch an assault on the Premier and his racketeering government. Credlin has single-handedly unravelled the Premier and showed up the failings of the Council assisting the Commission. It's been Peter Credlin's ability to recognise and to understand the antics of the Premier, the antics of Brett Sutton and what the government has been doing. The Premier may have thought he knew what the outcome of the inquiry would be, but Peter Credlin has had other ideas and the Commission has not been without fault either. But what is really disturbing, the part that really you've got to shake your head at, had it not been for Credlin, the Commission would have simply accepted what was being fed to it by the inquiry's witnesses without ever really wanting to get to the truth. The Commission had every opportunity to do the right thing but failed. Now it has no option. It's had to recall witnesses in what is an extraordinary sitting to outline what it intends to do. The Commission has been embarrassed into doing what it should have done in the very first place. Consider it was about to accept the testimony offered by a group of clowns that appeared before the Commissioner. Jennifer Coates, what she must have been thinking. Well, it says as much about the Commission as it does about the evidence it accepted and the evidence that was put before it. It has been, it must be said, an outstanding display of investigative journalism by Peter Credlin and a thorough explanation of why the Premier sanitises his press conferences, mitigating risk of exposure from the hard questions. It goes a pretty long way to explaining why the Premier has been allowed to literally get away with murder and a compliant media is as much to blame. But all that is now changing. And it's changing because Peter Credlin has refused to accept the falsehoods and the criminality of the Premier and the government. A week has not passed where the informer 
has not been critical of the Premier for his incompetence and his mismanagement of COVID. We've said it over and over again. And there are some who believe that the informer is just anti the Premier. Well, we are. But it's not because of our political allegiances. We will always strive to be apolitical. The informer is anti the Premier though, because he has been playing Victorians for fools. The Premier has been slowly destroying the state with his behaviour, which is bordering now on criminal and disturbingly wrong. And holding Daniel Andrews to account, along with all the politicians, has got to be the mandate for not only the informer, but every other credible news organisation in the country. And not to do so would be our failure as a news platform. The Premier's behaviour has become central to our future and the lives of every Victorian. Daniel Andrews supporters may not like our relentless questioning and criticism of the Premier, but the truth is, Everybody needs to understand that his behaviour is having a negative effect on the lives of Victorians that can no longer be denied or ignored. But condemning the Premier now goes further than just his mismanagement. It also goes to this mantra of his and his continued stance that he doesn't do this because he wants to be popular. He does it because it's based on the best medical advice available. Only problem with that is, that advice is coming under more and more scrutiny every day. And as for not wanting to be popular, well, that's just fanciful. The moment that his cabinet, these eight people, made the decision to allow owners and connections to attend this weekend's Cox Plate meeting at Mooney Valley, it was immediately met on social media by a barrage of complaints that quickly saw the government do what? Yes, commit a backflip and admit that their decision was a mistake instead of saying, hey, it was just unpopular. Had the Coates inquiry closed quietly, think about this, it would have been panned as a failure. Importantly, had all those who appeared before it been in a royal commission, then all of them would have been charged and some imprisoned. But it isn't a royal commission, and that really is the shame of it. The Premier, and Brett Sutton, Graham Ashton, Martin Pakula, Kim Peek and Chris Eccles and everyone else in this sordid affair must be held to account. It's just a shame that Commissioner Jenny Coates and her team have proven incapable of doing so or lack the wherewithal to do it. Victorians have a lot to be thankful to Peter Credlin for. The work she's done to show up the government's failings has been immense. And before you think the informer is part of the Peter Credlin fan club, you would be very much mistaken. It really is simply recognition of her great work. And if Peter Gredlin or anyone else was to behave in the manner that the Premier and his government have over the past few months, then the informer would call them out too. Because the truth is, Gredlin has lit a torch. And that light that it shed has exposed the rats that work at the top end of Spring Street.